In this episode of The View, I'm with Steve Whitkoff, the founder of the Whitkoff Group. Last year, you acquired the Helmsley Park Lane Hotel. That's right on Central Park, Central Park South. Is that the most valuable residential development site in the city? Well, we bought it as a hotel, right? and we really did. And, you know, it's funny, no, a lot of people didn't understand our game plan. Right? If you looked at all the other people who were bidding on this, and there were many, I mean, it was a who's who's list. But their game plan was take it down immediately. Not only are you catching a market today, the longer your money's out there, the less return you make. Our game plan was let's reconstitute this hotel. Our operating margins are way up. And that's now going to allow us to be very, very thoughtful about how, what our future approach is to this, to this deal. It's probably coming up on six months, right, that you've, you've owned this site and you're operating it. Are you leaning in any particular direction what you want to do with it? Well, I think there's going to be some condo here, that's for sure, you know, if the market holds. But for sure, we're going to keep some hotel here, too. Look at sort of how we're running this deal. We have great cash flow on it. It's increased by $10, 15000000 million. We're now going to go watch... Vornado benchmark the condo market there. So we get to sort of understand how deep that upper end of the condo market is. They do fantastic. That drives our decision. Uh, they don't do as well. That drives our decision. And so um, we like that. We like that. Well, you mentioned the Vornado Tower. There's others. Gary Barnett raised a large luxury tower, 157, with penthouse apartments that sold for $100 million an apartment. He's planning another similar type tower that's going to be even taller. And Michael Stern, another developer, is planning a 43-foot wide tower, a very skinny tower, that's going to rise 100 feet higher than the Empire State Building. Has this created some controversy, these super towers? But we've studied shadow effects in Central Park on the Park Lane. And, you know, you can take the data and you can manipulate it any way you want. But if you look at shadow effects of these buildings, they generally happen because of how the sun moves. They generally happen in the winter. Uh, um, if we put up a building within the zoning envelope, the additional impact would be for a two-week period in the month of December, when there's snow on the ground, when trees aren't growing, and when people generally are not in the park. So it's overstated. The shadow effect is overstated in your mind. You know, people um, uh, rubber stamp this notion that this shadow effect and all of a sudden what what it becomes is that developers are putting up buildings with no rhyme or reason to what the quality of li what the impact on quality of life is going to be in Central Park and it's just simply untrue. And how tall of a of a property could you eventually build there? It could be very tall, but we're not going to make it as tall as we can make it for for other reasons. Why not? First of all, I, personally, I just wouldn't want to live in a 100-story building or a 110-story building. It just I wouldn't want to live up there. The second thing is, I personally suffer from wanting to be well-liked. It's a problem. Is that the sad truth about the real estate business, that if you want to be well-liked, it, it's going to cost you in profits? I think you can be a good guy, and you can want to, and you can develop consensually, and in a complementary way. All those things can come together and result in a new building that, that works.